And our, our, our last lifetime new generation beat poet laureate is Paul Richmond. gonna do a little sound check here. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes. And you can hear him okay? This is Tony Baca, by the way. Yeah. Yes, give it up for Tony Baca. I am fortunate to have Tony Baca in my life. I am fortunate to have all of you in my life. And I am fortunate to have Debbie acknowledging all of us and letting us know that we matter and we let each other matter and thank you for everything that everyone said today it really um i wish i could have said it but you said it better so thank you and now for something we'll see i need a pen literally i need a pen no that's part of the poem I just wanted to see who had a pen for later. Because I need a pen, but I thought, okay, no, I don't need a pen. So I went to the bank. I don't have any money to put into the bank. But they have free pens. After a while, they noticed that when I come in, the pens need to be restocked. And many of the banks have put chains on their pens. Which means I have to keep finding new banks. I suppose it would be a lot easier if I just didn't lose the pens. Billy deserved it. When the camera focuses in, you see the poet get ready to give his poetry. And when he gets to the mic, he says, I'd like to read a poem about bullying. And from in the back of the audience, you hear you wimp. And the poet says, is that you, Billy? And Billy says, yeah. I should have drowned you in the toilet in high school when I had the chance. Poet said, Billy, could you could you step out into the light so I can see? I, I almost don't believe that it's really you. And Billy steps into the light and the poet says, Yeah, it's you, all right. You still got that same smirk on your face. And the poet pulled out a gun and shot Billy several times. And the waitress ran up and said, what the hell is going on? And the poet said, this is Billy from Dead End High School, and I shot him. And she takes away the gun and she said, really? This is Billy from the Dead End High School? He says, yeah. And she takes it and she shoots him a couple of times. And then the manager of the whole, uh, place comes up and he's yelling at everybody, what the hell is going on, what are you doing, who is this laying here on the ground? And she said, I shot Billy from Dead End High School. And he said, that's Billy from the Dead End High School? And he shoots him a couple of times. And then the police arrive. And the police say, who is the victim? And you know what the story is. And they shoot him a couple of times. This is getting a little ridiculous. And they remove the body. And no one's arrested. 
And the poet suddenly seems relieved that he doesn't have to read the poem about being bullied. And so he says, okay, I'm going to start talking about how lonely I am. And just, this is a really poem because I'm just really lonely. And suddenly the waitress, you want to be lonely. I tried to love you and you pushed me away. <laughs> the poet said, okay, I think I'll read a different poem. I'm going to read a poem about dealing with your shit in public. <laughs> Some people say they have a culture. You know, you have a culture. I don't have a culture. My culture was lost in immigration. Names were changed. Languages were discontinued. When you were Polish, Prussian, or Russian, it wasn't supposed to be discussed. And when Catholic and being Jewish were the defined teams, and then you realized you were both, and which team were you going to defend? <laughs> Grandma had a strange smell and made very weird sounds. We didn't understand. But she grabbed us in her arms and squeezed us tight and put money, little coins, into our palms. There's nothing before now, there is no history to learn from. The refrain was, try not to act Polish, try not to act Russian. We don't even know where Prussia is. <laughs> and lose the accent. Just lose the accent. Yeah, the structures aren't the same. So all the jokes about throwing the baby out the window and throwing the horse over the fence some hay. Yeah, those Pollocks are stupid. When new Polish people arrive, my mother meets them at their house and starts to tell them, you gotta take off all those colorful clothes. You just look too Polish. You gotta look American. You gotta maybe shop at J.C. Penney's. You gotta look like Look in Life magazine. So then I found myself. Somebody told me I joined my own culture. It was called the counter culture. I don't know that I actually joined it, but then again, I guess I was dressed in all the attire. <laughs> and I looked like it. And of course, there were the jokes about that culture, too, that we were barefoot, dirty, sex-crazed, stoned, didn't want to work. We thought, what's wrong with that? <laughs> so suddenly I was given this name, yeah, you're a hippie. Then again, they called us all kinds of things. Today our sense of identity seems to get trapped in our what sexuality are you? G Y K U L A D U D A. I said, you know, if you ask me, I know it's all important. I just try to leave Tuesdays open. And now the question is, is, do you have a social media presence? Are you somebody because people see you and like your stuff? And why doesn't Betty Lou give me any hearts? Me. And anytime I try anything else, people always say to me, oh, you're appropriating that culture. The only thing I know is that my Polish relatives stood in their fields and they threw rocks at tanks. And when people saw this in National Geographic, everybody made jokes in the cloakroom. Why would the Poles stand there throwing rocks at tanks? 
It's because the only thing they had, and they were going down, they weren't going down without a fight. My mother and father were brought together in the big melting pot of American factories. We're suddenly being Jewish, being Catholic, being Polish, being Russian seemed to not matter in the dream of having a house and kids. And Yet we've lost all trace of any culture. And so now I just find myself wandering lost. I'm wandering in the graveyards of culture. I'm standing on all the cultures, the graveyards of cultures. I wander lost. Who are you? Well, I mean, just a simple question. Just, you know, you can answer it in many ways. You can give your name. You can say I'm a beat poet laureate. I mean, I don't get to say all kinds of things, but who are you? You didn't know that when you walked into the room, everybody looked over and they don't know who you are either, actually. And that shouldn't bother you because since you don't know who you are, how is anybody else supposed to know? And you don't even know, you know, it's hard to tell. You keep wondering, who am I? And but maybe all well, you you know, you were you were called to this calling. You thought, I know who I am. That's who I'm gonna create. And then you graded yourself on did you create that persona that you thought was the real you? But then there had this time when you were sitting in a restaurant and suddenly the little girl sitting on the table next to you turns and looks you straight in the eye and says, you don't know who you are, do you? And she said, you're never gonna find out, I don't think. And she turns back to her mother who's trying to explain the universe. And as I'm sitting there taking this in, wondering why it happened to me, the waiter shows up with the bill. And I suddenly realize I guess I've done a good job of selling this person because I can pay the bill. In fact, I can even leave a tip.